Hello viewers, welcome once again to our ongoing series on genetics entitled Mendelism and Beyond. In my last two lectures in the ongoing series of uh, sex determination, uh, what we found was that uh, there was a very important aspect to sexual reproduction that is it gave rise to genetic recombination and via genetic recombination it gave rise to new recombinants and the new species. We had also discussed the importance of this sexual reproduction vis-a-vis -vis the asexual reproduction and vegetative propagation in organisms. We had a very long discussion on uh, the topic of sexual dimorphism and its various manifestations in various animals and plants. We also reached a conclusion that there were many, many causes, many advantages and a lot of adaptive value of uh, sexual dimorphism. I had also introduced to you learners the various symbols which were used to designate the two sexes and what was the rationale in naming them. We had also categorized various monoecious and dioecious plants and their different categories. Uh, we also spent some time studying the evolution of genic and the environmental sex determining mechanisms in these gonochoric organisms. By gonochoric organisms I mean that is the organisms which have both male as well as the female sexes. Thereafter we had uh, traced a very brief history of the earlier ideas regarding the determination of sex in different organisms and we began with the very erroneous ideas of uh, great thinkers like Aristotle, Homer and Galen who had uh, given very laughable ideas regarding the determination of sex. I had also in addition described to you uh, a unique case of uh, fishes where the sex determination was controlled by individual genes that were located on different chromosomes and there was no involvement of any sex chromosomes at all. So this was called as the genic basis of sex determination which was a very different type. Coming to today's uh, topic and that is the genetically controlled sex determining mechanisms, we are going to spend some time on sex chromosome mechanisms or what we call as heterogamesis. Heterogamesis means that the, the genetic constitution of the male and the female gametes is going to be different. Uh, you remember uh, viewers, uh, at the end of my second uh, lecture, I had uh, given you a point to ponder and that was in the form of a question. And I had asked you as to what were those unknown extra bodies of the chromosomes called. And uh, if you remember, I had also emphasized alongside that serious insights to the sex determination problem were in fact made possible only after the usage of the compound microscope. And uh, it was now that the hereditary carriers or the chromosomes could be actually seen, their morphology and their structure described in details. So let's go back to the history and on your screens you can find a little chronology of uh, how things took shape. As I said before, the Dutch Dutchman Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, he observed a sperm under his uh, uh, primitive microscope and uh, it was left to Karl Ernst von Bayer who also saw an ovum. Now, it was at that time that uh, Edward Strasberger had talked about the importance of these bodies 
and uh, Waldeer had given the term chromosomes. So, the story actually began as far as the sex determination is concerned uh, with the work of Hermann Henking. He was the one who had uh, started work on spermatogenesis in the squash bug. Now, squash bug is uh, zoologically called as pyrochorus and uh, interestingly it has 11 pairs of chromosomes in its meiotic nuclei and along with it, it has an unpaired element which moves to the poles. So, this unpaired element uh, seems to be an extra one and uh, as I asked you the question the other day, the answer was that the Henking called this element as an X body. His basic idea was that it was something extra and uh, he went a little awry in interpretation uh, of this X body. He perhaps thought that the X body was in fact a nucleolus which was eventually found to be erroneous and it was only after the work of Ernst uh, Macklung that uh, uh, when he was studying the gametogenesis in grasshopper which is Xiphidium fasciatum, he found that this X body was in fact an additional chromosome and he called it as an accessory chromosome. It was something extra which was present there. And uh, in this case of a grasshopper, the female has 24 chromosomes and the male has 23. So, that means the male has one less chromosome. Then came the classical work of uh, Edmund Wilson, who was working on the hepteran bug, a uh, protenor. As you can see on your screens, the female of uh, protenor has seven pairs and the male has six pairs all right, but then one paired chromosome. So, that means again the male has one chromosome less and this unpaired chromosome was called as the X chromosome. So, this was the first sex chromosome to have been discovered and uh, this also led to the naming of uh, a particular type of sex determination which we would see in detail subsequently as the XX oblique XO and it is also nicknamed as protenor type of sex determination. Uh, Nettie Maria Stevens, another brilliant worker, uh, she found out that the males and females in the beetle, Tenebrio, they had the same number of chromosomes. But one of the pairs of the males was different in size. So, this led to what is called as heteromorphy. And the other chromosome which was present, it was similar to the members of the pairs in the female. So, that means one of the chromosomes was different in the beetle. And uh, this is a photograph of the Tenebrio uh, molitor, which is the meal worm uh, where Stevens work uh, was engaged. Now, Stevens and Wilson, they found further that same number of chromosomes are present in both the sexes of another bug which is called as uh, Ligaeus turicucus or the milkweed bug. However, in the males, the homologue of the X chromosome was smaller in size and it had a different morphology. Uh, uh, do you understand where's where we are heading towards? We are heading towards the discovery of a different type of a chromosome which is perhaps the Y chromosome. And Miss Stevens also observed uh, Drosophila melanogaster and uh, as you know there are four pairs of uh, chromosomes in Drosophila. And uh, one of the pair of chromosomes was very peculiar because in the male fly, one of them was resembling the X chromosome, but the other was unequal in size and had a different morphology altogether. And uh, later, Wilson termed this unusual chromosome as the Y chromosome. So, on that account, we can easily say that Drosophila can be described as a genetic constitution having XX as a female and XY as a male. This was perhaps the beginning of a type of sex determination mechanism. 
as you can see on your screens viewer, viewers this uh, drosophila has uh, the female has uh, four pairs if you can uh, note the fourth pair is just like a dot so very little of uh, of uh, genetic material present there and let us uh, focus our attention on the x and the x chromosomes the pairing the side of pairing shows that it has uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, telocentric or acrocentric uh, type of chromosomes but then the counterpart in male we have again a y chromosome which is different in morphology and if you can see it uh, correctly the the tip of the x chromosome is uh, having the centromere however the y chromosome is uh, submetacentric so the pairing is is very unusual in our uh, karyotype that is in the human karyotype uh, if you can see on your screens clearly the male has all the autosomes they seem to be uh, similar we will just describe the auto and the sex chromosomes and the the y chromosome seems to be much much shorter than the x chromosome whereas in the female karyotype both the x chromosomes they are large and uh, in the later karyotypic studies you will find that they are they are like the seventh chromosome a detailed uh, view of the human x and y chromosomes highlights the disparity in morphology and size uh, which you can see on your screens viewers you will be surprised that the number of genes on our y chromosomes are much much less and we will spend ample time on uh, on the y chromosome and the x chromosome or and the genes which are responsible for for maleness so once this discovery was made then came a spate of modern discoveries whereas uh, alfred yost uh, talked about the differentiation of the reproductive tracts on the basis of the presence of these sex chromosomes bar and batram discovered bar bodies which led to a whole fund of new information regarding betty leon's hypothesis and the discovery of the x chromosomes one of them being uh, being non functional and so on which we would study subsequently the role of the y chromosome was uh, established by uh, two workers welchens and russell and uh, finally a discovery of the sry gene that is the sex determining region of y was also discovered and we will spend uh, quite a lot of uh, time on the uh, sry gene in our subsequent uh, meetings so when we are talking about the discovery of x and the y chromosome what are the different types of uh, combinations which are available in uh, our systems of animals as well as plants what i thought was that we will give a separate treatment to plants and their genetics as far as their sex determining mechanisms is concerned because they are also a very fascinating topic of discussion uh, we will restrict ourselves to the animal systems today although we will have a brief mention of the plant examples the uh, non sex chromosomes which are determining all the other characters of an organism would be the autosomes whereas the chromosomal sex determination system would be based on the presence or the absence of x and the y chromosomes so we could have a system which is called as xx and xo system what would it mean it is seen that uh, in uh, protenor bug in various grasshoppers members of hemiptera orthoptera we find that the females are homogametic that means they have two x chromosomes whereas the male has just one so that means the male has no counterpart no homolog of uh, x we would like to designate this as x0 and therefore the male in this case would be a heterogametic one whereas in the xy xx system the female has two x chromosomes she is homogametic 
and the male is again heterogametic but it has two sex chromosomes namely X and Y. In contrast to the protenor type, the XX XY system is called as ligaeus type. We also popularly call this as the drosophila type of sex determination or XY type of sex determination and uh, it is uh, prevalent in mammals also in us the humans. There is an alternative system which we will talk about and that is the ZZ system. Now in this case the ZZ is male and ZW is a female which is heterogametic. Now this seems to be absolutely opposite of the XX and XY which we have just enumerated and this is seen in birds, snakes, butterflies, some amphibians and also fishes. What was the rationale of, of changing this uh, terminology and the symbols from X to Y? We would see uh, after some time. So that means to summarize, we have in heterogamesis that we are studying two types of chromosomes. One, the autosomes, that means all the somatic character uh, controlling uh, genes and the sex chromosomes, which are responsible for the determination of sex and that is whether they are X or Y or Z or W. Uh, incidentally, the sex chromosomes are also called as heterosomes or allosomes. Let us look at a little more uh, detailed view of the modes of sex determination. The first one uh, is the XXXY and later we would see that uh, in certain cases we would like to call it as ZZ, ZW or the ligaeus type. And uh, the other one is the protenor type XX and XO. Let us first begin with the protenor type where the male has one chromosome less. So this is called as the typical XX. XO type and there is a random distribution of the X chromosomes into half of the male gametes. Uh, you would agree learners that the presence of two X chromosomes in the zygote will lead to the formation of a female offspring and whereas there is only one chromosome that is one X chromosome it would result in the origin of a male offspring. So, there is no Y chromosome involved, perhaps it is the it is the number of the X chromosomes which is deciding the sex of an individual. So, XX is a female a homogametic, the XO whereas O or 0 means no chromosome and this is a male. So, this type of sex determination is operative in, in members of uh, Hemiptera that is the true bugs grasshoppers, velisneria and dioscoria plants also show this type of a sex de uh, determination. We will have a, dis a detailed discussion on this uh, later. So, one chromosome of the male which is just one X chromosome would remain uh, unpaired and uh, male would therefore have two types of sperms. One will be N plus X that is along with X and one will be without X. So, that would be designated as N plus 0 or N plus O. So, that means the two sperms of the same male will be there with different chromosome numbers. On your screens where you see a picture of the protenor bug which shows a typical XX, XO type of sex determination. On your screens, if we find how the whole uh, sex determination chronology works is that we have a XX female which has 12 autosomes and 2 X chromosomes. The gametes would be 6 autosomes and 1 X chromosome. On the other hand, the XO male has 12 autosomes but it has 1 less of X chromosome. So, its 2 gametes will be either 6A or they would be 6A plus 1 X. And therefore, the progeny would be male and the female in the ratio of 1 is to 1. I would repeat that the males are heterogametic and they would produce gametes with or without X that is two types of gametes. 
a closer look at the pictorial depiction of the protonor mode shows that ultimately we have one X chromosome in uh, one of the males and two X chromosomes in the females again giving rise to 1 is to 1 sex ratio. There is a very interesting case of sexuality in uh, Cenorhabditis elegans. You remember viewers, this particular nematode worm is one of the most popular organisms in genetical studies along with Neurospora, yeast, Drosophila and of course the, the other modern uh, plants uh, that we have now in our genetical studies. Adult has 959 uh, somatic cells and the precise knee lineage is very easy to trace in the embryonic origins. Now, this particular worm has two sexual phenotypes and it also is grouped as the XOXX type. Males have uh, testes and there are hermaphrodites which have both testes as well as ovaries. So, that means there are no females around. The hermaphrodite either goes or in fact in most of the cases it goes through self-fertilization and when it undergoes self-fertilization more than 99 percent of the progeny are hermaphrodites that means they have both male and the female sexes whereas the uh, just less than 1 percent are the males. So, whatever less percentage of males are there if they are going to mate with the hermaphrodites then again we would have as a result of cross fertilization the hermaphrodites and the males in the ratio of 1 is to 1. The other type of sex determination as I said before is the ligase type which is uh, very prevalent in uh, members of the order uh, Hemiptera and they are also called as the seed bugs. Now, this is the typical XXXY type uh, mode of sex determination which we also like to call as the drosophila type. The female gametes have a X chromosome, the male chromosomes have either, the male gametes have either an X or a Y. So, that means it is the males that are heterogametic and the zygotes uh, will be formed with the help of the fusion of any of the X of the female and one of the X and Y. If you could uh, see the ligase type of uh, sex determination in a pictorial depiction, we would find that the male ultimately would have 12 autosomes and X plus Y, whereas the female would have 12 autosomes and 2 X. So, again there is a 1 is to 1 ratio and the chromosome numbers are also equal. Now, this type of XXXY type of uh, sex determination is seen in humans, in mammals, in drosophila and ligase type and uh, angiosperms like melandrium. We have a lot of literature on melandrium and its sex uh, reproduction and in uh, hops that is humulus and coccinea. So, this is a pictorial depiction of uh, what happens in the human sex determination system. We will have a separate discussion on drosophila genetics and human genetics and chromosomes. So, but one thing is very clear, the female is homogametic and it would produce uniform gametes with regard to chromosome types. Now, in uh, some cases, females are heterogametic. So, there, were, there was a need to change the terminology and uh, we call them as ZW type, whereas the males are homogametic that is they are the ZZ type and this is seen in butterflies, in various birds, in amphibians, reptiles, fishes and some plants like Fragaria. Now, this type of uh, uh, situation can be linked to the protonor type or to the ligase type, but we have to avoid the confusion at any cost. We will replace X by Z and Y by W respectively. So, that means the, uh, we will have now two types of sex determination which are ZWZZ and ZOZZ.
z. So, in this case now z z is the homogametic male and z w becomes the female which is heterogametic. Z o z z type is seen in various moths and butterflies and here the female is heterogametic and therefore, contrary to our expectations, it would produce two kinds of eggs in 1 is to 1 ratio that is z and a gamete without any sex chromosome. So, this is the typical butterfly having z o and z z type. The male would have uh, two z chromosomes, it would have only a single type of sperm carrying z. So, that means here the sex of the offspring will depend on the kind of egg. In human beings, the sex of the offspring depends upon the kind of sperm that we have. So, here on your screens viewers you find a depiction of a cross between the male and the female uh, butterflies having the production of, of different types of combinations. In the ZWZZ type which occurs in gypsy moth, reptiles and birds, we find that the, the chickens in this case, the males are ZZ as I said before they are homogametic and the, the females are ZW and they would also give rise to what we call as a ZZ female and a ZZ male a, in the ratio of uh, now the situation would be 1 is to 1. So, to summarize the types of sex chromosomal mechanisms that we have uh, includes two categories one we have heterogametic males and we have the heterogametic females. So, there was a need to change the, uh, the symbols from x to z and from y to w. In our uh, subsequent discussion, we will talk about the other mechanisms which are governing the uh, sex determination in uh, organisms. For this discussion, I have uh, also consulted a very extensive bibliography which ranges from Snusted and Simmons to Klug and Cummings and of course, the books of uh, uh, Piers, P. K. Gupta, H. K. Jain and many others. Thank you.